I think I'm going to tell uh, the one about Big Skunk and Wolverine. Uh, this is a trickster story. And uh, I imagine that we've all heard of trickster, but I would also be willing to hazard a guess that none of us know what trickster really is. Uh, being a kind of a natural man, pre-socialized, and uh, uh, very unpredictable, and uh, still uh, very much present in the world, uh, trickster is constantly transforming and surprising people and himself. But in this case, Trickster is a wolverine. And uh, at that time, and this of course is uh, in uh, mythic times with the Ka'atiyukan and Cree, Weshketabwe, really, really old, uh, there weren't any human beings yet. And uh, the animals at that time, uh, many of them were gathered together uh, with the wolverine as their boss because they were afraid of a big skunk. And this skunk's scent glands, which in Cree are called Weedwe, and for some perverse reason I prefer to call them that instead of scent glands. Uh, the skunk's Weedwe was so powerful that if he got you, you'd die. That's it. Very, very powerful. And they had more power than that. The Weedwe knew somehow if somebody crossed the trail of the big skunk, even if it was way back on the trail, and it would quiver. The weedwe would quiver. The skunk would get mad right away. If the person was a long ways away, it'd just be a little quiver. Even then, the skunk would turn around and go back and find this person and try to kill him. So the people, as I said, uh, were gathered together under the leadership of Wolverine, who was a trickster. And uh, so Wolverine instructs his little brothers, as he called them, never, never cross the trail of the big skunk, or we'll all be killed. And uh, as it happens, uh, one of the animals, uh, Martin, had a particular curiosity about what that track might look like. And so he thought if he approached the path but didn't cross it, and then burrowed down into the snow. And then he could come up right next to the tracks and look at them and then like that. Now again, well, you know what happened. Right away, the weed we quivered. The skunk turned around and started for them. Well, Wolverine had uh, what we might call a guardian spirit. And uh, he could conjure, and his uh, guardian spirit would give him information. Uh, over distances, and uh, so that night, when he conjured his uh, Stavio, they call him a big man, told him that the skunk was mad, the skunk was heading for them, and uh, they were in for it. And, uh, so the first thing Wolverine did was to get kind of mad about this, and so he asked, who crossed on his trail. Martin didn't want to be embarrassed publicly, and so he didn't say anything. And Wolverine didn't want to let this go, and so he went round to each person in the tent. Did you, did you, did you? And when he came to Martin, uh, Martin figured that they really couldn't face that one down, and so he admitted it. Okay, well, then what the Mustave have told me is true. We've got to get out of here fast. And so early the next morning, they packed up their tent coverings set off uh, to try to escape the big skunk. And uh, they were headed for James Bay uh, from inland. And they traveled fast, and they traveled hard, and they traveled long. Late that night, they stopped, made their tent, and uh, Wolverine conjured again. And uh, the Stavio told him, the skunk is getting done. And the next morning, they were off again. And uh, that night, uh, this would be the third night after the event, uh, the Stavio told Wolverine, he's going to catch up to you tomorrow. And uh, so they traveled on, but when Wolverine felt that the skunk was getting close, I don't know if he could hear it or not, he said, okay, little brothers, 
take your spears and hide behind the trees here. I'm going to dig a hole, and I'm going to get down in the hole, and I'm going to try to grab the skunk. And when I grab the skunk, you come out with your spears and do your best to kill him. So the bullframe made himself a trap, made himself into a trap. And uh, so he was crouching down, pretty soon here comes the skunk. Okay. And the skunk knew what was going on as far as this was where the trail ended, and the snow seemed to have been disturbed there, and so he stopped. He said, why are you running from me? And the wolverine said, because of your weed weed that we have to run from you, we're afraid of being killed. And the skunk appealed then to the protocol. He said, uh, well, why don't you look at me when you speak to me? What could he do? So the wolverine stuck his head up, but he had planned ahead. He was not only going to stick his head up, but as his head appeared, the skunk, of course, whirled around, raised his tail, and wolverine left and bit him. You know where. And he said, I got him. And uh, then he said, come out, little brothers. <laughs> and so all the little brothers came out. They didn't have bows and arrows yet. They took their spears, and uh, they went to work uh, spearing the skunk. And Wolverine was hanging on, and the skunk was thrashing around, and Wolverine was flying. But he didn't let go. Wolverines have very strong jaws. Finally, the skunk fell over. Is he dead yet? <laughs> so they probed him in tender places with their spears, and there was no movement. And uh, so he said, I'm going to let go now. So when he let go, he got just a tiny bit of weed weed in his eyes. Not enough to kill him, but it's enough to blind him. So he said, OK, I've killed the big skunk. I want you to cut him up into little pieces and scatter the pieces around in the bush, and there'll never be big skunks like this again, just little ones. And so they did as they were told. And then he said, I'm going to go down now to James Bay and wash off my face. <laughs> and uh, they said, oh, well, we'll take you. No, no, he said, I'm the one who did this. I'm going myself. It was very tricksterish. And uh, so he started off, and he didn't get very far before he bumped into a tree. Who are you, he said. Yash, the tree said, black spruce. And uh, so he went around the black spruce, and went on a little further, bumped into another tree. Another named the trees, and or they named themselves, I guess. And finally he got down to the alders and the willows, and he knew that he was close to the bay, and he went in and he washed <coughs> off his face. And he began to be able to see again. He was never able to see as well as before, but he could see pretty well. And uh, this is not the end of the story, but it has a kind of an end of the story sound to it. That's why James Bay is salt water. But we're going on. <laughs> uh, and uh, so he quite forgot about uh, his little brothers. And uh, he went on to walking along the coast, and he came to the bleached bones of a whale. And he had an idea. He took a rib bone and he put a piece of babish on the, the two ends, uh, nice and tight, and made the first boat. He made some arrows, and he was going on quite pleased with himself. And he came to some tracks. These tracks were at least as big as the skunk's tracks, but they were different. He thought, whoa, this must be a big animal. And he didn't know, because he'd never seen it before, these were snowshoe tracks. Of course they were big. He thought they were very good people. And so he followed the tracks. And after a while, he came to uh, a campsite with some teepees in it. And all he saw was one little kid about this high. And uh, that didn't seem right to him. And he said, uh, where's your father? And the kid said, oh, they're all out hunting caribou. And uh, the skunk said, okay, well, what have you got here? And the skunk the Wolverine said, what have you got here? And uh, so the little boy showed him around, and there was a small teepee, and in it were two young, very young Wolverines. They were Wolverine's children, but he had forgotten about them, too, until just now. And so he spoke to his children and said, well, 
how are you treated? What do they feed you? Well, they just feed us the livers of caribou. And uh, Wolverine didn't think that was suitable at all. And so he got quite angry. And he set off uh, on the trail after the hunters. And he came to a place where there was a pretty good sized tree with a limb that went over the trail. And so he climbed up the tree and came out on the limb. Wolverines do this. They like to jump on large game in that way. But he had a bow and arrow. So as the hunting group leader was coming back first, pulling his toboggan with caribou, Wolverine took his bow and arrow, shot him, killed him, jumped down, pulled the man off the trail, and then went back uh, to near where the people were camped to see what would happen. The people found their leader and they were very upset. They decided they had to do something to get rid of the Wolverine. But because he was so strong, they had to fool him. They had to be cunning. Now this is a problem with trickster. Okay? Uh, and so they announced that they were going to have a feast. And everybody, of course, was invited to a feast. And so they invited the Wolverine, and the Wolverine, of course, accepted to come. And uh, they said, what we're going to do, we're going to heat up some caribou fat in a bowl, wooden bowl, and we'll pass it around. And when it comes to Wolverine, we're going to hit the bottom of the bowl and drive that hot grease into his face, and it'll make him blind. Well, Wolverine's Mustavio told him that's what's going to happen. And so Wolverine went along with the feast. And when the bowl came to him, instead of tipping it up like this to drink it, he tipped it up that way and threw it into the fire and jumped down, saying, I think you're trying to kill me, and he went out. Well, he'd been a little more cunning than they were, and so they were surprised, but they had a limited repertoire, and so they invited him, <laughs> invited him to another feast. <laughs> and, uh, and we're going to try to do this a little differently. They said, we're going to uh, have uh, some uh, caribou blood uh, in a bowl, and we'll pass that around, and finally we'll get to Wolverine. And uh, so Wolverine uh, was waiting patiently, and when it came to him again, second time into the fire, it went. He jumped down. And so, amazingly, uh, they called a third feast. <laughs> and uh, this time, they were going to take a flat piece of frozen caribou grease and throw it into the bowl when it got to Wolverine, and that way he couldn't spill it into the fire. And uh, Stabiel told him this was what was going to happen, and so he went along, and he hopped up in his place and said, my, you're having lots of feasts. And uh, so the bowl started to make its way around, and of course, before they could throw the stuff in, he uh, uh, dipped the bowl into the fire, and he ran out saying, look out for my children. And he went into the bush, and there he stayed and stays. Well, the problem was that Wolverine had done some things that really offended his guardian spirit. The guardian spirit said, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have killed that man. And because of that, I'm going to go and stay with humans. You're going to lose me. And Wolverine shrugged it off, being a trickster. Who cares? And but he could make his way perfectly well without him and has more or less uh, sense. And that's how humans came to have guardian spirits. And that was, as we'd say, the first human community. Okay, that's 